Hey everybody, it's Brian. This is our ninth Q tutorial with C++, and we are going to cover the Q grid layout. First things first, you're going to need your minimal application, and I've changed it around a little bit. I've got some includes here: the include Qt GUI, or I'm sorry, Qt GUI, and um, Qt Core. And what these do is these give you references to the Qt GUI classes and the core classes. The core would be like Qt String, things of that nature. Where Qt GUI would be uh, push buttons. Um, labels, things of that nature. All right, now to start off with, we're going to go Q, grid layout, equals new, Q grid layout. And first thing we really want to do is window set layout. That way we remember to put the layout in the window widget. And let's make a queue label. Call this label one. New queue label. And we'll say the text of that should be name. And let's make a queue line edit. call this text one, or we'll call it text name, sorry. Yeah, can't type today, my keyboard's being kind of funky. All right, so, so far we have our Q main application, our Q widget, which we're using as a window. We're setting the title, we're making a grid layout, we're setting the layout to the window, and we've got some controls or some widgets that we made in memory, but we haven't done anything. So let's go layout, add widget, and you see how it says the parameters are widget, row, column, row span, column span. We're going to go over those real quick. Um, they're kind of self-explanatory, but the first one is the widget you're adding, and sorry, not the layout, it's the label and then the row. Now think of a grid layout as literally a grid or a table, like if you're looking at Excel or a spreadsheet program. Zero, zero is the first position, so we're going to put the label in zero, zero. Now we're going to add the text box to zero, one. Think of this in terms of a grid. Zero, zero is upper left. Zero, one is right next to it. Notice how we have not defined how big this table is. Um, the Q grid layout's pretty intelligent. It's going to automatically figure out how big it needs to be. Let's compile and run this. And there's our application. Now notice how it's nice and neat and lined up and we didn't really have to do anything. And we can resize it as well. Alright. Now let's actually copy and paste a few more of these. We'll call this label 2 and text name 2 and we're going to copy that paste it here now we can't add them to the same position so what we're going to do here is we're going to go down a row so we're going to say row 1 and then row 1 column 1 alright compile and run this hmm now something is amiss here what is going on let's look at our code see if we can figure this out here We've got label one used twice, that's why. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you have just been the victim of copy and paste. Let's compile and run it again. Now it should work. There we go. So you can see how the grid layout allows you to very quickly build up a form and have it resize and do whatever you need to do. Now let's add a push button in here. And just for sake of clarity, we'll put it down here. Q push button, and we'll say, whoops. And we'll say OK for the text. And we're going to add this in. Whoops, let me grab that. I've been playing uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, so my gaming mouse and gaming keyboard are really tweaked for the game and not for typing. And we're going to add the button in there. 
and we're going to add this to 2, 0. And this time we're going to say, how many rows do we want this to span? 1. How many columns do we want this to span? 2. Now what that's going to do is say it can take up one row and two columns. And it'll be pretty clear when we run this. Let's compile and run. And there it is. So you see, here's label, text box, label, text box. And then here's our button. It's in position 3, 0. See, 1, 2, 3, position 0. But it can take up two rows. And it'll automatically resize as needed. So this is Brian. Um, today we've covered the grid layout. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and I apologize for my gaming keyboard being a miss. I will try to get that fixed before the next video.